Well, it's that time again. We've acquired enough materials while doing other projects like a building over there that you see to start the next phase in the Paul Savatelli football stadium. One of the other things we did was we planted a bunch of trees ahead of time so we'll have a constant fuel source so we get it done faster. As we know in the last series this was all done only about half of that was done and that whole side didn't even exist. And we got this done and this side done. But then again, as I've said before, you look at this corner and say, this side isn't done. Well, that's because this is divided in nine sections. The middle being the field, home side, visitor side, home end zone, visitor's field zone. And then there's the four corners that join them. So the corners are considered separate. I was going to do them dead last, but I decided I'll do them as I do the end zones. And right now it's shells only. So the stadium is pretty empty. And I am thinking about starting the interiors because we got this new chest and it's loaded with dyes, well, lapis lazuli, rose red, and some yellows, and a lot of wool. So we got interiors thought up already, because we even have much more stuff in stock ready to put in the furnace and make use of. Much more than last time, which finished half of that in almost that whole thing. So we'll definitely get that whole side completed in terms of the shell. Then we can start on the interiors. And of course, this source will help us. And as I said, everything is full of new cobblestone as well as other stuff we've uh, previously made, but we didn't have enough mat other material to start. So, the process is about ready, and as you can see, full there, full there, full there, and a ton of coal to help keep these ovens going, and all of them have 64 pieces of coal, so they're ready to go, and that is completely filled. Got some fencing for the uh, guards there. And a sheep. So we'll get to the interiors and ultimately we may not have to rely on these makeshift steps to get to the other levels and the stadium itself to get to the second floor. One of the first things I want to do is when I get all this, all the uh, physical structure concealed from the elements is with the use of these loading docks make some stairwells and ladder elevators that get up to the second level so you don't have to go through the outside of the stadium and I'm not going to show it to you now I'll do it in a city tour map is that over here we have a subway stop there are currently four stops in the system And each stop has a piece of unpowered rail to act as a brake. Then you just push yourself along and it'll move you along. So we got to get things started for this next phase. And this should end pretty quickly. And like I said, we'll do a city tour someday and this thing froze up all of a sudden. So eh, some gravel wound up in here. So let's get the show on the road. And the next time you see this video I will 
either be done with this phase altogether, or I will have enough material to do a next part, which is working on the interior, and that'll uh, continue from there. So we're all fired up and ready to go. See you when we either finish the shell or we run out of this stuff. I think it'll be the former. Okay. We've come to a point where we know we finished this side. We've finished that side, which is not showing because it's not going to update properly. Good job making the multiplayer code work in single. And we know that we've done this side, but now we can officially say the bowl and the physical structure itself has now been completed. In fact, since that side's not updating properly, we'll go over here. Of course, we know we got doors, windows, and other things to do. One of the things we got to do is put in a floor because this is not the finished grade. And this grade was determined if you've seen the actual, uh, the, uh, initial videos is this would be the height of just below the field. Yeah, I know. I can't exactly get the words out. So the f this was the average height of the land. And of course, usually your decking is higher than the field, and that's where that number comes from. And as we can see here, those are the fake legs I put in there and there, as well as side opposite. And this is where a mountain was, so we don't have to do too much here, except where I gotta remove gravel. And you can see for the most part, just from what we're looking at, the whole thing is now complete. In fact, just do a quick run around. Boy, this map is not generating properly at all. So what I'll do is, uh, it's got to be a lily pad out here somewhere. Well, I'm not going to waste my time looking for anything. Anyway, here's what the... Uh, let's put the torch in hand. That's the exterior for the most part. It's missing a few chunks over there. We'll get it to draw again. So the whole thing is completed. Like I said, the actual shell. Now it's a matter of doing the innards, and we still have plenty of raw material to work with. I think the first thing we'll do is the ladder elevator system. Yes, it's not generating properly. Typical multiplayer thing. Once we get close, this will fill in. Just like that. Now that whole side's missing. Oh, the entire side's missing. Yeah, you gotta love the uh, multiplayer code. In actual multiplayer, it's much worse. It just never bothers you. You have to dump out and try again. So, we got the entire... The entire thing done and just to prove to you that yes all four sides are complete we'll just go through here and look at it again here's a chest we collected a lot of uh, wool to double as plaster walls and it's still not generating correctly but you get the idea but we'll just get right up to it Yay, bad code. I won't mock him because, hey, it's better than what I can do. I can't even get it to say 
print my name on the screen without screwing up. But the whole thing is completed, and now it's time to work on the interior. Well, it's finally completed. As you can see, I even put the sign out on front. And you might notice if you look at my hotbar, it's in creative mode. I have said from the very beginning, I don't know if I did on video or not, is that when the release date is getting close and I got projects to finish, which I did, that the 11th hour stretch would be done in creative to try to wrap up as much as we can. I will tell you the entire shell and one corner, with the exception of new lighting, was done solely in, what mode is it? The uh, survival. Anyway, you got to keep in mind this is a in-dev map. It will be available for the public. And Salvatelli Stadium is what we're looking at. Here are the lines, there are the ticket windows, and they have ticket prices. And we have this bypass gate for short lines, and I forget which elf episode it is, but all the exaggerated prices are pretty much a tribute to the episode of Alf going to the drive-in. Now we'll go in. And you can see visitor side, ladies' restroom. This is the only building with restrooms in it because the rest of them aren't big enough to hold one. And I had space I couldn't do anything with. This is pretty much the only thing that existed was the Real Transit Authority subway system. And it has been changed from the last... From the uh, tour video you saw with Delay Pat and I. It was a single track. Now it's a double. It is designed, as you can see by the green and red, to go a certain direction on a certain side of the tracks. And they have the major stops right there. This one does not have a quote-unquote ladder elevator, but I think maybe there's a place that I could shove one in. I'm not 100% sure on that. Anyway, let's... Here's the field, and there's the scoreboard. Now, it looks really tiny, but that is an actual humongous scoreboard there. Well, actual in size. Minecraft grossly overstretches the, the distance things appear at. For example, if we look at this field, look at how it almost appears square in nature. It's because the game overstretches distance. But when we tip down like this, you can see it shrinks back down to size pretty much. So, I mean, that's the only real noticeable difference other than everything being lit up. And since I uh, decided to follow the east-west rule that most places use to designate home and visitors, I changed the red side to be here and the blue side to be side opposite. These are the locker rooms. These are the showers. There's the bench and the and the chests or lockers, quote unquote. Nothing in them, but you get the idea. Looks quite a bit different when from when it was a uh, pretty much a fuel burning plant for the time being. The other one looks exactly the same. So there's nothing really different here, but now the building has guts. As you can see here, we have some spare some spare areas we didn't know how to work with. And we got concession stands and souvenir stands. We got little signs here, concession stand, and of course home team value prices. Just your typical uh, Minecraft food items there. And of course, if you don't have the home ticket, you pay the regular price, which is really high. And I noticed I screwed up pork, but I don't care. And you got the ovens, the sinks, and storage. And as you can see, all I did was simply split a stack just to make it look more full. That's because I don't have the time to 
make sure everything is 100% full. And then souvenir stands, it's, well, I couldn't think of anything. So it did heads. Could have done uniforms, but that would have, that would have been kind of hard to do and cumbersome in time. Might change when we play. This was the only corner that was done with the exception of the lights, solely in the survival mode in terms of finished product and a few signs. These were birch planks with four torches on each side. I put a glowstone block in and it output the same amount of light. So for slower computers, it just makes more sense to do this instead of having four light sources have one larger one. And of course we have the quote unquote ladder elevator system, which is mentioned right there. Shipping and receiving. These doors are one ways. You hit the lever to open them. That one is not. And close that. And again, these are the ladder elevators. Just turn your back and hit any old button left, right, and there's the phone ruining my day. All right, as I was saying, to use these and see where you're going, you just go backwards, you'll climb, hit left, you can climb, hit right, you climb, and when you reach the floor of your choice, you just simply move forward if you don't overshoot your door. Anyway, let's just head right back down. You press nothing, you go down. That easy. And more storage there. And meeting rooms. Nothing put in here, but leave that up to you how you want to use it. And like I said, this is the only building in Realville that has restrooms because the others are too small to contain them. And I didn't know how to make restrooms at the point. This is the men's room. You got sinks. And of course, a stadium's men's room is not complete without the trough. And of course, we got toilets on this side. The sit-down variety. Ladies' room is exactly the same with the exception of the trough this area will have more toilets just like this. So you don't need to see that. Then we get to the visitor side because the theme goes from blue to red. And again, we have meeting rooms that I left empty. The end user can do as they please with those. Some things in this city are intentionally left empty so you can do as you please. This side, the home and guest sides only mirror themselves but not each other because I did all this wonderful work and then realized that this, these stairs are, they should be over here, not over here. And I just said, screw it, leave it the way it is because nothing on this, uh, nothing here matches on the home side anyway. So what's, what's the difference? Again, storage. And you got signs telling you where stuff is located. And the same old concession stands in the, uh, you know, stands there. This is the rear ticket area. It's the same thing. It's inside, same prices, same blah, 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 all that wonderful stuff. So pretty much that's what the first floor has to offer for us. It's, it's all the same thing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head up a floor because this is going to be the luxury box floor. So we'll go up a level, up the ladder elevator because, hey, I like them better. Here we are. And this is the luxury box floor. I'll show you number six. And this is one of the larger ones. Basically, it's a it's a basic luxury box. I've looked up pictures of actual luxury boxes to get ideas. And this is 
typically what one is like. They, you know, you got some nice seats, maybe some tables, artwork on the walls. And that's your basic, uh, you know, it's a basic um, luxury box. There are luxury boxes that are, that, you know, that are more elaborate. They have, you know, stoves and microwaves, their own restrooms, but yeah, we'll go with, go with the basics. So this is a normal luxury box with a fancy sofa on the, uh, in the middle. And if you're wondering about the artwork, if you're not a Minecraft player, the paintings, the sizes are randomly chosen as well as the actual pictures that it's that it draws. However, the specific sizes that are on the wall are the sizes I've chose for those designated areas. As if I go in here, you can see some of the pictures are different. Again, they're all randomly generated in the game. And you gotta knock them down if you don't like them. And over here, Savatelli Clubhouse. We got nice seating area here for dining and hanging out. And a quote unquote, one of those zero clearance gas fireplaces. It's made to look like it's one of those. Then we have the upper le the upper level. Again, we have seating and tables, but you can see most of these chairs are facing towards the window, which I know it's real hard to see, but the field is visible. I mean, it's not 100% functional, but the whole point of it is to look and feel like a stadium. And over here we have the kitchen that that serves the clubhouse over there. Nothing different here. And here's the view from the upper portion. Well, again it's dark. And as you can see, lights in every window, which is a sign of everything is pretty much there and ready to go. So, there's not really anything to see. This time we'll take the stairs. We'll go to the third level. And all the third level is pretty much just access to the upper deck, which is here. And again, there's the football field. However, there is a slight difference on the home side. We have the quote-unquote media booth, which pretty much is just some desks and chairs that overlook the field again it's not exactly meant to be fully functional it's just a believability factor shut that door I know there's some doors I left open anyway don't care and the other side there's nothing it's just a continuous hallway and you can come out the other side And coming down the other set of stairs. So you know, I pretty much show you everything there is, really. That's Salvatelli Stadium in a nutshell. However, now that it's done, I think we should celebrate. Don't you think? We'll be back. Alrighty, as I mentioned, it's all done, and we're going to celebrate with a little fireworks show. For those of you that play the game, I did not have the time to do anything more than pretty much one simple firework, and then I tried to do other effects, and somehow I couldn't get it to work. Well, you know, I suck at this game anyway. Yeah, I can build some nice stuff, but other than that... So let's sit back and enjoy the fireworks, shall we? If they even work.
Uh, wow, all that effort, and that's <laughs> and that's how short it was. Well, it did its job, surprisingly. So uh, this is Georgia five five one saying, I hope you enjoyed the series on Salvatelli Stadium. And there's the whole giant mess that I worked so hard on to give you such a tiny show. And that'll be it. Have a good one.